this? Yes, of course you can. And you know, that's sort of the whole point of having these entities. So all I'll do here is I'll just create an entry for each of these planets. Tune and like I said, we will consider Pluto as one of the planets, even though Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson disagrees with that. So we have these nine planets here and let's just, just go ahead and save it. Let's go back to our intents we have defined here and I'm just going to change this intent slightly and change the name of this to user asks for attribute of planet and let's delete these two training phrases. Now the reason I'm deleting these phrases is that um, Dialogflow to be able to extract the entity value it can only do that as as you type in the training phrase. That is, it can't go back and retroactively uh, annotate attribute values in existing um, training phrases uh, from what I've seen till now. So let's go for what is the color of, let's say, Neptune. You can see that it is now extracting two entities. The first one is the attribute entity which has a resolve value of color and the second one is the planet entity which has a resolve value of Neptune which is great which is exactly what we want and then we can say tell me the radius of Mercury and it does the same thing. Show me the volume of Jupiter. Let's, let's try that. Okay, great. So now we have all these three and what I'm going to change this one is I'm going to make it you ask for attribute of dollar planet and you can see that it's now showing these two entities here because those are the two that Dialogflow was able to uh, annotate from the training phrases that we have provided. So you ask for the dollar attribute of dollar planet and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and save this uh, intent and uh, you can see that now we have only three intents the welcome intent the fallback intent and then the one which where the user is asking for the attribute of a planet and uh, if you can't if uh, if dialogue flow is not able to map it to one of these uh, either the welcome or the fallback it's uh, or the attribute uh, intent it's going to go to the fallback and let's see what actually what it actually does uh, what is the color of earth. I want to make sure that I use lowercase to make it match correctly and you can see that it's saying you asked for color of earth. Now just a quick uh, uh, small detour again as I mentioned I typed in the value here with lowercase so that it doesn't mess up the mapping but that is why we have this uh, synonyms thing over here and you can actually add in the uppercase of a given value and that should fix that problem. That is even if it were typed in as uppercase now, what is the radius of earth? And you can see that it has gone to the correct response. And the reason it is not using the uppercase over here, it is coming back with the lowercase is because in the entity values that we already have it's going to choose the whatever is appearing on the leftmost column that is the you can think of it as the key and these are the values um, if you had changed this to uppercase then this answer would have also been in uppercase and that's pretty much it so what did we do now what we have accomplished is we have taken these uh, the common parts of the question and turned it into an entity. There were two common parts here. The first one is the attribute. Uh, instead of having training phrases and intents for all the attributes like color and radius and volume. In fact, you can add more attributes uh, as you want. Um, you might be able to add, add let's say, the uh, weight of a planet. You can add it as an attribute. Um, but you can add that and the other um, common, uh, common I guess question was which planet are we talking about and so we declared an entity called planet and we 
use those entities, those two entities, the attribute entity and the planet entity, and we were able to, you know, simplify the question or the training phrases as well as the intent definition quite a lot because now you can just imagine for a minute, let's just stick with the three attributes we already have and let's say that there were nine, we are considering all the nine planets. If you had to get it to work without using entities, that would have required you to declare three times nine, which is 27 different intents. By uh, using the entity, the concept of the entities, we have been able to compress that entire 27 intents to just one intent. And that's the basic idea of what entities are. Um, entities are more powerful than just that. But uh, for this uh, lesson and for this, like we are still mostly dealing with the simplest parts of dialog flow. And uh, to keep it quite simple, I'll just stop there. And now you got a good overview of what entities are in dialog flow and how you can use them. Now, before I end this lesson, I'll just add a little less, one more small thing, which is other than the entities that you declared over here right now, the attribute and the planet, Dialogflow also has something called system entities. And system entities are predefined entities which Dialogflow can easily extract from the training phrase. A good example of a system entity is the name of person. Uh, Dialogflow can actually identify people's names in training phrases. Let's say you say like my name is John. It should be able to understand that John here is the first name of a person. So there is a system entity called first name uh, for first name and then there's a system entity for the last name. There are system entities for city names and dates, date ranges and colors and, and whole lot. You can go and look up the documentation of Dialogflow and see which what are all considered as the built-in system entities. And the advantage of the system entities is that when you type in a training phrase, it will, if it can identify one of the system entities in the training phrase, it will do the same thing you saw with the, um, you know, you, you, you might have seen that it was doing this yellow highlighting over here. And, you know, the color doesn't matter. It does some highlighting. It's doing annotation of the um, word with the attribute that it was able to identify. In that case, it will be able to do the same thing with the system entity. Now, just for the sake of explanation, I'm going to show you what it is. Show me the, um, let's say, let's see. No, I don't want to do that. Let's just go for my name is Jack. And you can see that it was able to extract the name and it's able to assign it to this entity called sys.givenName. And now that's a hint that it's a system entity because it can see that it has the sys.prefix and it was able to resolve this to a resolve value of Jack. Now, obviously, you want to delete it and not save it into this particular intent because it makes no sense to have the training phrase in uh, as a part of this intent. So I hope that you got a good idea of what entities are. And in the next uh, lesson, we will be moving on to what seems to be a stumbling block for a lot of people when they learn dialogue flow, which is the concept of contexts.